the moon shines bright. In such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees, and they did make no noise. In such a night, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls, and sighed his soul towards the Grecian tents, where Crested lay that night. Oh, so very well read, really. It was like being at a play, was it not, Sir Thomas? Indeed, the play must be a favourite of yours. After tonight, sir, it will be. But to tell the truth, I like an audience. <laughs> Did you speak? No. I don't think you've told Miss Price anything she does not know, Henry. Miss Crawford, will you join us for cards? Oh. Yes, you deal. I've often resolved to make good my neglect of Shakespeare. But it would take regular study, and I am not constant in my habits. What did that shake of the head mean? Nothing. You shook your head when I said I am not constant. Perhaps sir, I thought it a pity you don't always know yourself as well as you did in that moment. You have spoken. Hardly to please you. <laughs> but it does please me. If I don't understand your opinion of me, then how can I improve on it? I and you know I'm going back to London. And you expect by the end of the week I shall have forgotten you. Believe me, you're quite wrong. You are cold. I intend to be quiet. Uh, four for you. Funny. You up? My game. Oh, very well read. Well done. Well done. My dear Miss Price. Now the moment has come. I hate to leave Metsfield. <laughs> Good, gentle Fanny. I don't know how it is, but you will have so much more heart than one usually finds in the world at large. And I confess, I would like to have seen Edmund once more, ordained or no. There were things I said to Edmund that I wish unsaid with all my heart. Would you tell him so, Fanny, from me? Me? No, you must not leave me with such an errand, Miss Crawford. Well, at least you will give him my compliments, I hope. Is there not a word missing in our language, Miss Price? Something between compliments and love. Evan, how is the, uh, coordination of your work? You absolutely spent very much planted on Thank you. Badly told me you had something very difficult to discuss. I have an unusual request to make of you. The Reverend Bertram! <laughs> How well it sounds. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Stayed away so long, I thought you were never coming back. Did Sir Thomas send for you? No. The reason I stayed away so long was to avoid Mary. Only to run into the Crawfords just as they were quitting the village. You know, if I hadn't, I might never have seen Mary again. I'd quite decided to forget her to end the whole torturous business. But seeing her just now, her, her manner to me was so very sweet, and her words so simple, her looks. I cannot give her up. She's the only woman in the world whom I can ever think of as my wife. She's invited me to visit her in London. Oh, no. And I must waste no time in doing so quickly before the habits of wealth and fashion scupper my chances. So, now I am to go away again. I'm sorry, Fanny. I promise I'll write as soon as I have any news. And anyway, I gather it's you I have to thank for their delayed departure. Fanny? How can I say I'm sure we'll think very differently? That's true, I think. 
Crawford's proposal a highly desirable one. If you can return his affection, but Fanny, if you can't, of course you mustn't accept him. I was afraid you'd blame me. Blame you? Your conduct has been faultless. But I can see you might wish to love him, the natural wish of gratitude, if nothing else. And you know, my father thought he detected some little thaw in your feelings. No, he was mistaken. I promise you, he was mistaken. Oh, well. Nothing Edmund could say had any influence over her. She will not have him. I'm not surprised. There's something about Fanny I've often observed. She does not like to be dictated to. Fanny is very young. A period of reflection may be all that's required to bring Fanny to a more sober appreciation of Mr. Crawford's offer. I propose we leave Fanny behind when we visit your mother. Oh. It will involve a small sacrifice on your part, my dear. For three weeks? But I presume on your goodness to allow it. Of course, if Fanny were to marry Mr. Crawford, I should not dream of missing her. Never mind the loss to me. And I tell you what, if she does, and this is more than I did for Mariah. Next time Pug has a litter, I shall give her one of the puppies. Dearest Edmund, perhaps it is because of my present solitude that I cannot stop thinking of our last meeting. And I so wish, I wish, I wish. I did not mean to say you should not hope. Life without hope is intolerable, and even I, in my secret heart, dare hope that... Forgive me for calling like this unannounced. I had such a desire to see you. And here you are. You are tired, Mr. Crawford. Oh, I have been too much in society. And I too little. Oh, then we are equally in character, Miss Press. Mm. Shall we walk? Have you news from London, Mr. Crawford? Nothing of any interest. 
No war, no fire, no revolution. But Mariah and Julia are tireless followers of fashion. And even Edmund has dined several times at Mariah's, where, as you may know, my sister is living at present. Mary's appetite for society remains undimmed. And Tom? Oh, we see no more of Tom than you do. The last I heard, he was at Newmarket, continuing his giddy career of drinking and gambling. Whereas I... Mansfield has spoiled me for anywhere else. Or perhaps, living with this all the time, you no longer see its beauty. But to me, on a day like this, it is an uncommonly lovely sight. Oh, I think so too. I can imagine nowhere lovelier than Mansfield Park. You see, I haven't forgotten about you, Fanny. Not for a moment. I've been thinking of you constantly. Have I not proved myself? I just don't know how to answer you. Oh, you know how to answer me. Just give me some sign, Fanny, no matter how small. Tell me I may look forward to being happy. Help me, Fanny. Guide me. I can't guide you. We all have our best guides within us. If only we would listen. Well, leave me to my own judgment then, but my better self, as you well know, is in your keeping. himself until he brought on such a fever that he hardly knew who or where he was. Finally, his physician insisted on calling us to him. And now, they have fear for his lungs. I am so very, very frightened, Fanny. I'm sure I didn't go near him. With my weak chest, it could prove fatal. I'm sure we have more reason to hope than to fear. God, you were right. But now, I am guided by Sir Thomas in everything. But can it be right for him to go away again at such a time? Sir Thomas is leaving us. Now, 